Well, hello and welcome back to Teal House Farm. We are just getting back from church. I'm getting everybody lunch real quick and then the littles are gonna take a little nap and Ivy wants to help me, but we're gonna work on some food preservation pro projects today. So I got a whole bunch. I just wanna get them done today so that I don't have them hanging over my head the next couple of days. Um, we're gonna make, we're gonna can some potatoes. We're going to make some fruit leathers and we're gonna make some cauliflower rice or riced cauliflower, depending where you're from which I really like um, to, to make uh, bowls, like rice bowls for myself for lunch. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just do all of that today and then we are set up for this week. Okay, we're gonna start with the potatoes. They are the longest project. Um, it will take probably about two and a half hours from start to finish. A lot of that is passive time because it's the potatoes hanging out in the canner. But what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our jars. And people say this a lot, and I say this too in canning videos, and I think we don't always do a clear job of what it means to have prepped jars. So we are going to pressure can the potatoes. So if you are watching a video with pressure canning and somebody says, now get your uh, prepared jars and fill them, what they mean is that they have washed these jars in hot soapy water and that they have kept them warm somehow. So if you have a dishwasher, just put your jars in the dishwasher and send them on a wash cycle and then don't open the door until you're ready to fill them. Now I don't have a dishwasher, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to wash our jars in hot soapy water. And then I'm gonna rinse them in hot water and then I'm going to put them in the oven until I need them. I turned the oven on 200 degrees and when it hit 200, I just turned it off and I'm just gonna put all the jars in that warm oven and just leave them there. We're not baking the jars. They don't need to be piping hot. They just need to be warm because when you fill a jar, you don't wanna fill a cold jar with warm liquid because it could possibly explode on you. Another option would be to wash all your jars by hand and then put them in a really large pot that has hot water on it in it and just let them sit in the pot as well. Those are all good options. For your lids, you're gonna wash them in the hot soapy water too and then you're gonna set them in a bowl of hot water and just set it aside. That helps soften the seals and keeps them warm until you're ready to can. Now, that is for pressure canning. If you are water bath canning, the steps are different because you have to sanitize your jar. But today we are pressure canning and so this is how we're preparing our jars because we're gonna get ready to put potatoes in them. any like dirt contamination and I love these scrubby pads maybe 10 of these that came in a pack and I use them for washing dishes instead of buying disposable sponges and I've had them probably three years now and they still are all in great shape um, I use them for washing dishes or for scrubbing vegetables like here and it's great because they have a soft side and a scrubby side and I just throw them in my rag bucket and wash them with rags and then you never have to buy throwaway sponges again. And they've held up really well considering that we don't have a dishwasher, so all of our dishes are being done by hand. Hey, do you need help? Fall off? Okay, got it. Can we open your banana? Oh, this banana is kind of yucky. Can you go pick another one? Go get a different one. This one's yet. We'll save it for bread. Okay, first step is to peel these potatoes. We're going to save the peels. I'm going to put them in an old bread bag and throw them in the freezer for next time I make broth. And then we're going to chop up the potatoes into about one inch cubes. In the sink, I have a big pot filled with cold water, and we're just going to put them in that water to sit until we're all done. It keeps them from browning. And I have a pot of boiling water on the stove that we'll use when we can. There we go. Now let's get ready for the next step. Okay, we're gonna go get our canners out and I was gonna clean my stove top before I made this video because you know, people like to clean this thing. I mean, it's not that bad, but I'm just gonna apologize that it's dirty. I didn't bother to clean it because when you can, you just get residue everywhere and it's gonna have to be cleaned after. So if you see a little bit of residue from when Ivy fried uh, donuts, <laughs> 
which by the way we're delicious ivy uh that's why just don't judge me i'm not gonna clean it totally. Now we get out our prepared jars and we're gonna fill them. We want one inch headspace, but I always overfill when it comes to raw pack because when you add the water and then debubble, it always makes things settle. And you can always take some out later after you finish filling your jars if it's still a little too much. So I'm gonna fill just above the bottom rim and then we're gonna go ahead and add our boiling water from the stove. And then we're going to use a plastic knife, run it around the inside to knock out any bubbles and then wipe the rims with a damp cloth or paper towel so that there's no residue on them. And then the jars are ready for our lids and rings. We're gonna try out our new four jars lid that a viewer sent us. I'm excited to give these a test. And we're gonna go ahead and put these in the canner. Okay, next step, we're gonna make some cauliflower rice or rice cauliflower. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy this in the freezer section at like Walmart than it is to make it yourself. Yes, Annie. It depends on the time of year. Right now, the cauliflower is really cheap. It was two for $3. That's cheap for where we are in this time of year. So it's gonna be cheaper for me to make my own. I really like um, cauliflower rice and I make like rice bowls with it for myself for lunch. Rice has a lot of calories and unless you're doing brown rice, it really doesn't have any nutritious value for you. So what I like to do for lunches is I'll take some like canned salmon or actually I really like canned sardines, which some of you probably hate, but I like them. And I'll saute, yeah, I mean, I'll saute it in butter with some vegetables from the fridge and some salt and pepper. And then I'll cook, I'll steam the cauliflower rice from my freezer and I'll just mix it all in a bowl together. And it tastes like a fish and rice bowl without all the empty calories of rice and it's good for you and you can have a big heaping bowl and fill yourself to the gills and still not have eaten you know a tremendous amount of calories which is great um, it's great for nursing because I'm just hungry all the time I could I swear I could eat 5,000 calories a day if I let myself um, so you get to fill your belly but you're not going to gain a whole bunch of weight by eating way too many starches which is what you really crave when you're nursing so Okay, very simple to put together. We're going to take the green parts off of our cauliflower, rinse the cauliflower, run it through the food processor, freeze the little bits on a sheet. This part is just to keep it from all clumping together in one big clump when you put it in a bag. So this part is optional. If you're doing a small amount and you don't care if it clumps together in the freezer, you can skip this freezing on a sheet part. Then we're gonna put it in um, some baggies in individual sized portions since it's usually just for me. I'm the one who eats this a lot and then put it in the freezer. All right, we're gonna peel off the green parts. We're gonna actually feed these to the geese. Our geese love these, so those will get used for something. And then we're gonna roughly chop and put into a strainer here so we can rinse them off. And then we're gonna dump our rinse pieces into our food processor. This will take a couple of loads to get all this done. We're gonna make sure that it's nice and finely chopped. And you're gonna have to stop it along the way and kind of mix it around, because I find that some of the larger pieces can get stuck at the top. I'm also going to use some broccoli stems that I saved from earlier this week. It's going to make the cauliflower rice a little green, but it's all kind of the same vegetable anyway, so it's a great addition and it uses up something that you don't normally use when you cook anyway. Once it's all mushed up, we're going to pour it on this cookie sheet and sit it in the freezer for about an hour just so it kind of starts to get frozen. The girls have some fun pretending there's steam coming out of their ears. No more mad. Like, you know, like you want to punch someone in the face. <laughs> okay, so our final project, we're gonna make some fruit leathers and we're going to use cranberry sauce to sweeten them instead of honey or sugar, uh, just because we want to try this. And we had this hanging out in the pantry. We don't like jelly cranberry sauce. I like to make homemade cranberry sauce and can it. So this is 
do you need to go outside? Mikey, could you let her outside? Um, so this has been sitting on the pantry. It came in like a Thanksgiving box that the parents and teachers gave us for our, our family that they come and do classes with the little guys. So it was very nice of them, but we didn't ever eat the cranberry sauce because nobody likes it like that. So we're gonna try to make a fruit leather with it. So Ivy is going to add some bananas, these leftover strawberries from dinner the other night, and this cranberry sauce in a pot with just a little bit of water. We're going to simmer it for just a few minutes to soften the strawberries up and then give it a good mash and set it out on our dehydrator and see what we end up with. Whoa. Uh, oh, that had water. Mm -hmm. I it. Sure. Get a little bit. <laughs> Not bad. Whoa, it's but sour. It's, do you think it's like minty? I think it's not minty. It does. It smells like a McDonald's smoothie. Very carefully dump it all in there. No, just keep going. You sure? Mm -hmm. Aim carefully because you're getting it. You like it? Yes! After we're done licking up all the goodness, it's time to clean up, which is my least favorite project of food preservation days. There we go, that's better. Okay, our canners are about done, and you always want to let your canner get to zero, then let it sit five minutes before you remove the lid, and then you can go ahead and take out your jars. These look great. We did six quarts, and I think we did about 10 pints. Next up, we take the cauliflower rice out of the freezer, and we divide it up into individual serving size and baggies. And we're gonna pop these back in the freezer for until we need them. I did a whole bunch of bags. So this will go quite a ways for lunches for me. The fruit leathers had to sit overnight and then they're ready to be tested. This is gonna be two hours. Okay, one of the fruit leathers is done. So JJ here, we traced the tray on some parchment paper. We're gonna peel the fruit leather off and stick it in there and roll it up. They are special scissors. They are special scissors. All right, you're almost done. Okay. Mommy, do I put it, do I peel it off and put it on there? Okay, there's our circle. Yep, peel it off. Mommy, Peels right off. Look at that. And then lay it on the circle. Mike, you want that neat? I don't know. What do you need, Bob? He has a little basket that's from the uh, mouse cage. There we go. Now we're going to roll it up. Roll it up. Oh, that's a That's what I did. All right, get me um, a big pair of scissors. No! Ow! I'm cutting them into strips. <laughs> no! Eat this part. Don't eat the paper. That was just so we could cut it These easy. These are like fruit by the foot. So yep. Do you like it? This is how I re-roll mine. Yeah, okay. Can we make them a foot long? Let me see, JJ. What do you think? Uh, oh. I like it. You, you don't like it? Okay, Pat says no. Okay. No, JJ says yes. Goop says yes. Not really. Not really? I like it. Mikey? Wait, can you I like it. I like it. Do you want it? It's okay, but it's no fun. Okay, Pat changed his mind and now it's eaten a lot of it, so, but I do think the cranberry flavor is a little bit too strong. Mommy, I need some. I want another one. It's yummy. I like is it, it. Is it healthy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I like, really like cranberries. Though. I love it. So I it's love a little it. more sour than it is sweet. So I think but if we were to do it, you, okay. If we were to do it again, we would probably add more strawberries and maybe not use the cranberries, but use honey instead. But the texture is great and it held together great and I like it, but not as sweet as probably the kids are used to from the store-bought ones because of the cranberries that make it a little more sour. Say, see you next time. See you next time.